Hey everyone, Gabriel here, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my point of view on how dropshipping is changing and how you need to adapt your strategy in order to be successful in 2019. As a lot of you know, this space changes really quickly, and so some of the strategies that were working well in 2017 and 2018 are quickly becoming outdated. And so in order to be successful and to stay consistent, you need to constantly adapt, and that's what I'm going to be focusing on in this video. I'm going to be talking about the main strategy changes that I think you should implement in order to be successful in 2019. So without further ado, let's get right into the content. So first off, I want to talk about niching down. I think that it's becoming increasingly important for people to move towards a one product store strategy or a niche store strategy in order to differentiate yourself from the mass of sellers who are just working on general stores. Now, the reason being is that general stores aren't converting as well due to the number of people that have had bad experiences with similar stores in 2017 and 2018. So if you weren't aware, dropshipping as a business model has been on a massive uptrend since 2016, 2017, and a lot of people have been getting into it and making general stores. And the thing is, is that people are starting to recognize the patterns of what a dropshipping store looks like. And so many people have had terrible experiences with these stores. Like, you know, people don't like waiting um, more than like a week to get their products. So people aren't going to reorder if they know that it's a dropshipping store. And people are starting to get smarter and to start recognizing these stores. So you really need to move away from the image of just being a general dropshipping store. What you want to do instead is focus in on a niche or a product and build a brand around it and focus on the design. That's what I put here. You want to also place an increased focus on the store's design to avoid being perceived as just another dropshipping store. And this is really important. And I want to show you a few things to convey my point better. So this is the first thing I want to show you. This is Google Trends for dropshipping. And this is 2004 to present. So as you can see, dropshipping has been around for a while. But um, if you look, if we get to about um, December 2015, it's really when the uptrend started over here. And since, since 2017, 2017 is when it really went um, parabolic. So as you can see, um, dropshipping since January 2017 is now three times bigger in size according to Google Trends. And now this is obviously just search interest, but you have to keep in mind that these are people, this is the amount of people searching about dropshipping every day. So three times, three times more people are searching about dropshipping than they were um, two, uh, one or two years ago, right? So you're looking at a massive increase in the amount of dropshippers and um, in competition and the amount of general stores and the amount of awareness for dropshipping in general. So that's why I'm saying that it's important to move away and differentiate yourself from the rest of sellers who are all just doing general stores. And you might think that a lot of people are already doing the one product store strategy or the niche store strategy, especially since I've been preaching it in all of my videos, but I've been asking people for feedback and most people are still stuck um, with the idea that they need to do a general store to test a bunch of products first. And so there's actually not that many people who are doing these one product stores. And I think that it's going to be one of the biggest um, shifts that's going to happen in 2019. I think more and more people are going to be switching to one product stores or niche stores because they just work better at the moment. The thing I want to show you is a comparison of a general store versus a one product store selling the same product to show you how much more compelling the one product store is. So this is a general store here. They're selling these indestructible shoes, which was a winning product for a while. I think it's still it's still selling pretty well. And yeah, so this is a pretty good general store. It's better than average, I would say. But the first thing that happens is when when customers see all these categories, all these unrelated products, um, the first thing they usually do is they'll check Amazon or eBay and they'll just price check because you know, if, if, if it's a general store, people understand that there's nothing special that you're offering, right? There's nothing unique. And a big company like Amazon's probably going to be able to offer better prices versus if you have a brand that's people don't think like that. People are like, oh, I like I like this brand. I want to see what products they have. But if you have just a general store with a, all these unrelated products, categories and everything, people are likely going to check eBay or Amazon to price check. So that's the first error that happens with general stores. Now, the second thing is that all, all general stores kind of have like same patterns. And like I explained before, people that have had bad experiences with general stores in the past are not going to order again because they're going to recognize these patterns. So some of these patterns, for example, this 43 sold in the last hour. It's super common on general stores. Um, all this stuff right here, that's not that bad. This is pretty nice. Um, quantity breaks. I like quantity breaks, but even quantity breaks are starting to be kind of a pattern that people are recognizing, right? Like you don't see quantity breaks on real e-commerce brand stores. Only on dropshipping stores you see quantity breaks. Now, um, I mean, obviously, sometimes like uh, big brands will do deals, right? Like buy two, get one free. But this exact layout of just like buy two, 8% off, buy three, 12% off, that's kind of something that people are getting used to seeing on these dropshipping stores. 
Now, another thing is the countdown, the trust badges. You'll never see trust badges on like a proper brand. They don't need trust badges. And so that's another giveaway for people. And um, trust badges again here. Um, this guarantee here. It's a good guarantee, but literally every store has this guarantee now. Like this is copied from Blue Crate and every store has it. So people are going to start recognizing that. And so you guys get my point. I mean, like people are just able to recognize the patterns and they they pick up that it's another store shipping from China and they're going to be less inclined to purchase the product. Now, in comparison, this is a one product store selling the same product and you can see how much more compelling it is. So this brand is called Indestructible and it's indestructibleshoes.com and all they carry is a bunch of variants of this indestructible shoe and this one is actually the exact same one you can compare the two pictures it's the exact same shoe so these guys are probably drop shipping and it says right here due to high demand the delivery time will be three to five weeks so they're probably shipping from China right but since they have this custom website they have this nice brand um, they can get away with it so look how clean this website looks like they have a clear color scheme they have black and red um, you know they have all the proper sizing laid out um, you know they have these uh, these newspaper mentions, you know, they have custom um, infographic images showing what the product is, shock absorption, lifestyle photos, you know, um, and it just looks really clean. And they've got this brand Indestructible, so you clearly know this is this store makes indestructible shoes. So you kind of think that this would be, you would think that this is the brand that invented these shoes, right? Um, even though that's probably not the case, they're probably just drop shipping. So, you know, they're selling all these different stores, all these different indestructible shoes, and I'm sure you could find all of these on AliExpress or on Alibaba and just um, drop ship them right from China. And they built a whole brand around this winning product, so they found that indestructible shoes were selling well. It was a proven product, so they invested a lot into making this clean website, and it paid off. And to prove to you that it actually paid off, I can show you their, their this is their, their Facebook page. And this is the only ad that they're running right now, but if we copy the video URL, and we check out their ad, um, you can see that it has a lot of views. It has 14.4 million views, and in, in th this was about, about a month ago. So you can see, I mean, um, sorry about that. It says, I really need these indestructible shoes. So they put their own brand in the, the ad, and you know this is, this is just a dropshipping ad. But the fact that they've got this whole brand going, they were able to really push it, and you know it says it has 14.4 million views so you guys can imagine how much sales they did with that like they probably did crazy numbers and even on their product page it literally says like it literally says three to five weeks shipping so they're not even being dishonest about their business model like they're just not they're obviously not going to say we're drop shippers but you know it says due to high demand the delivery time will be three to five weeks so people don't have unrealistic expectations and people are still willing to order because it looks like the original maker of this product and people don't feel like they're getting scammed. Now the next point I want to talk about is focusing more on branding and this is kind of a continuation of the first point that I was making but I think this is also important to cover by itself. So first of all this is easier to do when you have a one, a one product store or a set of products on your store only in a well-defined niche. So for example that indestructible shoes website we just looked at, great example and you can do great branding with that or you know there's a ton of brands like High Smile for example. High Smile they have one main product which is their teeth whitening kit and they can build a, a massive brand around that, which is actually the biggest teeth whitening company in the world. Or like, you know, like Fit T, they just have one product and they can build a brand around it. So when you have just one product or one set of well, one set of products in a well-defined niche, you can, um, you can really brand that well. And so you want to transition to private labeling as soon as possible. And I understand that not everyone has the funds to do that, but if you start off with a one product store and it starts doing well, you can reinvest your profits into making it into a private label brand and that has the potential to pay off massively. Now another thing is you want to use lifestyle imagery for your products and sell a lifestyle with your product. Now this is something that's going to, you know, once again differentiate yourself from other dropshippers. Even if you're selling products that aren't private labeled, if you have pictures in a lifestyle context, you use a lifestyle to sell your products. Um, it's going to do a lot better than people who just have normal white background photos on their stores just imported from AliExpress, right? So having lifestyle imagery for your products and also for social media, right? You want to have a lot of lifestyle imagery on your social media pages and that's going to help you sell a lot more. And one thing that people don't understand is that people will browse your social media pages before um, making a purchase from your site. So everything matters. It's not just the product page. Your, your social media pages, if they have a lot of lifestyle imagery, a lot of good content, people are way more inclined to actually buy a product. And so that's another big shift that's happening as people becoming more and more skeptical of 
um, these, these stores shipping from China with products not arriving, people are putting in a little bit more research before ordering a product. So your social media pages should have some lifestyle content and you know that, that will make a big difference. Another thing is you can also use micro influencers to generate content. So this goes with this point here, the lifestyle imagery. The best way to do it is with micro influencers. And if you don't know what micro influencers, they're basically what micro influencers are. They're basically influencers that have less than um, 50 to 100,000 followers. So basically, smaller influencers on the smaller end. And those influencers usually um, they don't charge much for promotions. And if you have a good product, they they might be even willing to to post about your product or make content with your product in exchange for the product, right? So you can either ask them, hey, I'll send you this product and can you post about it on your feed? Or you can say, hey, I'll send you this product and in exchange, all I want is some, some photos with you using the product. You don't even have to post it on your feed, I just want the content. This is a great way to get some content for your brand and um, it's, it's a low cost way to do it. All you have to do is ship the product um, from China and uh, or, organize this, this whole exchange. Now, another thing you want to do to focus more on branding is you want to strive to offer faster shipping times and better customer service. And this, again, is becoming increasingly important. More and more people will send a message to your Facebook page before ordering. They'll be like, hey, what, what's the, um, where are you shipping from? What's, what are your shipping times? And so if you, have all, if you have good customer service and good shipping times in place, you're going to get a lot more orders. And this actually makes a massive difference. People underestimate how important this is. And so having good customer service and striving to offer better shipping times is going to make a massive difference. Now, an example of focusing on branding is High Smile, obviously, and I mentioned that at the start, but I want to go on their page just to show you how, um, how effectively they're doing this. So this is High Smile's Facebook page, and the first thing you notice is all this social proof here. They have so many different people using their products, 1 million plus satisfied customers. So that obviously plays a big part. And then um, if you scroll down, I mean, this video has 70 million views, just to, that's just insane. And then if you keep scrolling, you can see all the content that they post every day. So this was nine hours ago, uh, 22 hours uh, yesterday, December 17th, December 17th, um, 16th. So at least every day they're posting multiple pieces of original video content. And so what this does is that it keeps their it keeps their following engaged. It makes them seem like a real brand. And most importantly, all this this content they can use it in ads. So. This is great. I mean, they're generating content consistently and they're building a real brand. And the crazy part is that this product isn't even that good. Like it's just a teeth whitening kit. There's a ton of competitors selling the same thing. You can get it on AliExpress, um, on Alibaba. Nothing crazy about this product, but the, the reason they're doing so well is their branding and the amount of content they put out and the amount of influencer marketing that they do. So this is a great example of how you can build a brand around one product, even though your product doesn't have really anything special um, versus the other options available in the market, what they have is they have great branding and this allows them to sell a lot more. And another thing you'll see is in the comments, um, they engage with, with everyone, right? So they have people actively engaging and that's what I was saying about good, good customer service. Like this, if they do this every time, overall it adds up, right? Like if every comment that they put um, helps convert one more sale, this adds up and it doesn't cost them a lot to hire more customer service reps. So all these little things, and this this is what make this is what separates you know a regular store from a proper brand that does uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in sales. So the last thing I want to talk about is multi-channel advertising. A lot of people at the moment are focusing only on one ad platform, and usually that ad platform is Facebook. And the problem with this is that when you have all your eggs in one basket, um, you know you're really you can really be affected by external factors. So for example, Facebook recently published an update that made users spend a lot less time on Facebook, and the result was a lot less ad space. And that didn't make the amount of advertisers go down. So naturally, the cost of ads went up. And this can happen all the time. And if you look at the trend over time, I mean, the ad costs are just going up. Like there's more and more advertisers every day and ad space is going down. So you can naturally, you know, the costs go up. And this could happen with any other ad platform. Like most ad platforms have rising costs, but Facebook costs are through the roof. And the thing is, is that you don't want to stop using Facebook. Facebook is still an amazing platform and it's still underpriced if you use it correctly. But you can get a lot better margins if you implement multi-channel advertising. And what I mean by that is that you can, for example, I have two examples here. So the first one would be you could reach someone initially on Facebook and then you could retarget them with a YouTube pre-roll ad. And this is something that I'm seeing a lot more lately. So like, for example, if you see an ad for like a watch that you like and you click on it, you visit their website, but you, you, don't, you decide not to go on it, Instead of just spending a ton of money trying to retarget you on Facebook where you know it's going to be a narrow retargeting audience and there's a lot of people bidding towards you, 
you could just instead test YouTube and pre-roll ads. So next time I go on YouTube to watch a video, I'm going to have a video of that same watch and you know maybe I'll, I'll decide to buy it. So that's one thing you could do. Another thing is you could reach someone through Instagram influencers. So you could do big influencer marketing campaigns and not spend any money on cold traffic whatsoever on Facebook, but then have a funnel for your Instagram engagement on Facebook ads where you're retargeting people who have visited your page, engaged with your posts, and you can have a different funnel based on how long ago they were on your page and everything. So um, yeah, you can build you can build these multi-channel funnels and not rely only on one platform to get your traffic. All right, everybody, so that is pretty much it on this video about the strategy changes that I think you need to implement in order to be successful with dropshipping in 2019. I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe and leave a comment below telling me what you want to see next. I would really appreciate that. And also make sure to join the Facebook group. That's the second link in the description. We're at like 6,000 members now and it's growing really fast. So make sure to join that um, super helpful group. And on that note, I'll see you guys next time.